well, at this point, you have such a large portfolio of great stories. Mm. Um, and I want to talk about one in particular. Mm. I mean, we could probably choose from so many, mm. um, but it got a lot of notoriety. Mm. Was it 2015 or 2016 when you wrote about the... It came out in 16, yeah, yeah, 2016, yeah. Yeah, so, so this is the story, um, and probably a lot of our viewers are familiar with this already, mm. um, about a Czechoslovakian man um, who infiltrated the CIA. Mm. So maybe, you know, you did the research, you're much mm-hmm. better than yeah. telling the story than I did. Can you tell us the story of this of this guy? Yeah. And then, and then after that, we'll, we'll kind of break down the process of how you wrote it. Mm-hmm. And but, but first, start is what happened here. What, what, what's going? Yeah, on? I mean, the short version is uh, it's it's a complicated story. But the short version Give us is the long version. Yeah. We got time. Yeah. Right. We're doing a podcast. All right, and, uh, the, and uh, the publication too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, Carl Kocher or Coker depends on uh, Americans call him Kocher, and he was in the states for a, while, a long time. Uh, he was. Uh, you know, he worked for the S S S T B, the S T B, the Czech uh, spy serp, Czech K G B, Czechoslovak K G B. He got sent to the states in the mid '60s. I think it's been a couple years now, but 1965. Um, and his job was he, him and his wife were sleeper agents. They were their job was to penetrate the CIA. That's what they they they. His his orders were to to do that, and so. Uh, posed as you know defectors from from uh, you know communist Czechoslovakia, pro democracy advocates or whatever, moved to uh, suburban Nyack, New York, uh, outside of New York City, um, and just started living there basically. And 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 he was a really sharp guy. He had a PhD in physics, I think, from from maybe he didn't have a PhD yet, but a real strong academic background from 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 living in Prague and uh, got sort of started um, making connections in the states through academia sort of uh, studied uh, did I think he did a year at Indiana University in Bloomington Indiana got a fellowship there then he was went to Columbia uh, was doing a PhD there uh, and sort of started like um, connecting with sort of you know elite you know society um sort of working with radio for europe uh as a translator in new york uh which was actually then directly uh a subsidiary of the cia i think since sort of has been spun off a little bit but was directly a cia you know funded organization at the time um and eventually was there long enough that he convinced six seven years later convinced uh got a job with the cia convinced the cia that they should hire him uh, he was a his language skill he spoke russian german czech um e- english um so that he would be useful his knowledge of you know the the eastern Bloc, having lived there his language skills would be an asset to the cia in terms of monitoring uh monitoring things he um and that's is uh, he's the only uh i believe this is i'll use the words carefully here he's like he's the only uh foreign agent known to have uh penetrated the cia get it been hired directly by the cia uh other people have been you know american traders that were working for foreign right. uh, intelligence agencies but he was a, the only guy there may have been others he's the only guy we know about who was actively charged with getting inside the cia and actually did it do, do you know about it because it was declassified from the united states no Russia? Uh, there's there was some stuff. I mean, he, he, it ended up being a pretty big, briefly a big story in the mid '80s. So I mean, so he basically he basically got caught in the mid '80s mm-hmm. um, and was arrested, and uh, ended up being th- there's quite a bit in between. He was a spy in between, and him and his wife were were uh, swingers. They were sort of partiers, and and uh, so there's sort of this racy tale of 1970s mm-hmm. New York where they're sort of on the party scene, which kind of makes it sexier story yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but he ends up getting caught and, and uh, um, you do, know do you know how he got caught or the uh, yeah I think there's a guy that that, that ratted him out or? yes basically that's a short mm-hmm. version uh, um, but he ended up getting caught and was in jail for a while and then they, they tried to uh, Rudolf, Rudolf Giuliani was the prosecutor <laughs> uh, trying to convict him of, of being a spy but uh, something got botched in the sort of investigation. They, you know, they had given him immunity mm-hmm. for him to it, to testify, ex, you know, about something. And well, the prosecutor so, messed up. Uh, the FBI messed up. The okay. FBI had said, you know, hey, tell us, tell us what you've been up to, and if you do, we won't, you know, mm-hmm. we won't try and convict you. And then they 
tried to convict him anyway, so all his admissions were okay, inadmissible right. in court. Right, right. Uh, so he was in jail, and they couldn't really do anything with him, so they ended up trading him mm -hmm. uh, on the Bridge of Spies in, 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 in Berlin in 86, February of 86. Um, so, I mean, how he, this sort of tail end of the story was pretty big, you know, uh, racy news in the mid '80s, basically in New York City tabloids and stuff yeah. like that. Still the Cold War. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, uh, so there's a, there. That's kind of you know, it wasn't a complete secret in this way. Um, the um, I sort of stumbled across it. I had heard about it in Prague, sort of as this guy, and I found him and just started meeting with him, basically, and 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 uh, you know, interviewed him for a lot, you know, whatever. Dozens of hours, basically. How old was he at that point when you when you interviewed him? Uh, he's in his 80s now, so he's he's in his low 80s. He might have been 80, 81 when I met him. He's mm -hmm. he's maybe 83 or 84 now. Um, of course, he's banned from going back to the U.S. He right? is uh, banned. <laughs> he's banned. He was an American. So he had uh, acquired American citizenship. He had to, part of the deal to get traded. He had to give that up. Mm -hmm. Him and his wife are banned from going. Do you know who he got traded for? Yeah, yeah, he got traded for this. Uh, also, quite this is why it was bigger news at the time quite famous uh, dissident, Soviet dissident at the time. He's, they, he was, they called him Anatoly Sharansky then. Mm -hmm. Now he's called Natan Sharansky. He was a uh, Jewish uh, Soviet citizen, Russian citizen, uh, who had been spent years in the Gulag and was a very high-profile sort of human rights um, advocate in the 80s. And, uh, you know, actually Ronald Reagan, you know, was the president of the United States. And so he sort of... Um, it was sort of a big cause to try and free this guy from the gulag in the Soviet Union. And this is who he was traded for. He's a very, I mean, quite a, you know, not a huge celebrity now, but in the mid-80s, this guy was a pretty wow, big, yeah. pretty big deal. He traded on the Bridge of Spies. On like, the Bridge like of the, Spies. Uh, the movie, right? <laughs> yeah. But, they, but to, to, um, the American files are not declassified. Uh, what is declassified are the uh, Czechoslovak old, uh, uh, most of the old Czechoslovak spy files are declassified. So, there are quite a lot of files about him and, and what he was up to in Ch in Czech. Um, in the, well, that this sounds like kind of an international issue. If you're releasing information that is classified in the United States, possibly you don't mm. know, mm. Um, but it's declassified in another. But they won't confirm or deny, right? Uh, so I mean, the the, the uh, information is it's not the same information necessarily. I think also an interesting, uh, maybe an interesting side note. <laughs> there was a guy who wrote. Uh, Sort of in parallel, when I was working on this story, there was a Czech guy who wrote a, a book. Uh, I didn't really know about him at the time, and things kind of came out at the same time. Wrote a Czech language book uh, about this guy, and he had been working on this for a while. And he said, I met him once, and he said um, he had gone to the archives here in, in, in Prague and, you know, was going through the files and then, you know, whatever, for one reason or another, had to not put the, the project he was working on on the side for a couple months for, for whatever other other work and six months later or whatever he went back to the archives to get the files again and some other stuff some of those things had been reclassified and they had been reclassified at the request of the uh, u.s embassy wow so uh you're you know you're right they're they're, they're sort of uh um um multiple sort of balls in the air here The so obviously the u.s government asked uh, the Czech government to reclassify certain things that they mm -hmm. determined to be sensitive. Mm -hmm. The Czechs uh, have an interest in sort of declassifying as many of these files as possible to be transparent mm -hmm. about, you know, the Everything. communist era yeah. and stuff. Um, and so, and a lot of the files are totally, you know, harmless, just detailed. I mean, really right. interesting to look at, but they're mm -hmm. talking about what kind of clothes people are wearing, mm -hmm. you know, surveilling so-and-so on some street corner. So it's, it, it's really interesting to look at, but, um, not like and really int feels like really spy stuff because it's like you know january 10th 1981 you know uh you know broadway and 52nd or whatever uh, um and they're talking about stuff like he's wearing a blue coat with a fedora on or something <laughs> so that stuff is in there which is really cool but it's like not super secretive you know and, and most of the you know you do see how much of this spy stuff is pretty trivial i mean you know how many people are being paid to spend time tracking other people and for years and years and years and how useless a lot of the stuff really is